First of all, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Yes, and to all of those that uh, have stood where there were fathers, when the fathers weren't there. Amen. So we thank God for that. Um, as I was thinking about the lesson that I was going to bring on this morning, um, I don't see the image, but I still have the lessons here. Um, the fact of the matter is, in growing up, oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've heard a lot of conversation about the fathers, the good fathers, and how great they've been. And uh, I thank God for that. Um, uh, I grew up, and my dad wasn't always, well, my dad and my mom didn't always get along. So most of the younger part of my life was my mom. Uh, but I always felt loved by my dad. Um, I realized two things, and it's so true. Um, I realized that even though my dad wasn't there during the early part of my life, I got a lot of wisdom from my dad. I really did. Uh, I can hear my dad now talking the things he poured into me. But I got my humility and my strength I got from my mom, you know. And so, and just saying that, you know, I've, I've heard people say things like, you know, that, um, that a, a man can raise a woman, a girl into a woman, and uh, a woman can raise a boy into a man. And I'm not here to differ that, but it did cross my mind. I was reading the book of Proverbs 31 um, about a virtual woman. A woman that's virtuous. I made some really good, some good items in there. Uh, but the more I read about it, the more I realized that, and, it, and just me just sharing my opinion about it, just an opinion, that as much as I would love my daughter and pour into my daughter, I could never uh, blossom my daughter into being a virtuous woman. As a man, I couldn't do that. Um, and even as a as a mom who loves her son and pours into her son, she, I mean, I mean, yeah, you know, she can, like me, um, my mom taught me humility. My mom stood against a lot of odds, you know, um, um, and uh, she taught me strength, how to stand. But let's go to a scripture, if we may. Uh, let's go to the book of Psalms, Psalms 27. Psalms 27. And I'm reading the Amplified Version. I've only got a couple of scriptures. Um, Psalm 27, you, you'll see that on the image. But I realized that um, where there was a deficiency um, or a lack of my dad being there, thank God. Thank God for his presence. Thank God for watching over me. Thank God for pouring into me. Thank God for just, you know, as poor as I was, and, and, and as many times that, that I'm just saying, uh, uh, you know, that um, my dad wasn't there. Uh, he was there for me. And he poured into me. Here we go. In the book of Psalms, I'm reading the Amplified Version again. Uh, Although my father and my mother have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up. And the Amplified says in parenthesis, Adopt me as his child. And see, so, you know, I don't get into the debate, I really don't, about whether a man can do this and a woman can do that. And, uh, but but um, I do believe this, that uh, to a certain extent, I've heard it and I think it's true, that a cub needs to see a lion doing lion things to know what it is to be a lion. And I'll leave it at that, praise God. I thank God for the fact of, being blessed with a father and uh you know but during my later days we, my dad was real close and so forth and, and i i really thank god for that um in putting this lesson together some some strange thoughts came to my mind one thought was this that i'm blessed to have a father and that although jesus was both human and divine and although Jesus Christ had a spiritual father. He never had a natural father. And sometimes I, I say I trip on that and I think about, wow, the times when I really want to talk with someone and I had deep conversations with my dad. Even when I, was, I would go up to where we, my mom was separated, I'd go up to his apartment 
and he would pour in so much into me and, 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 and he would comfort me and he would tell me the things. A lot of times, the things that he told me, you know, he may have fallen short on. But I realized that it was somebody who I could hold hands and, and talk with and share my emotions. And for, and, and for just a, 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 a few seconds, it's going to sound strange, but it's, I'm just honestly, I felt sorry. I said, man, you know, Christ never had a, a natural father. You know, I think about the song that uh, Marvin uh, Sapp sings. Uh, you just don't want to know. He says, he says, uh, now it's true that God is always there. And God said he would never leave. But here it is. But here's the key thing. But sometimes a human touch is what I need. Somebody just to hold my hand. I was thinking about that. And then I, I thought about something else too when I was thinking about that, that situation. How Joseph was not the father of Jesus Christ. Christ was his father. Um, the message today is simply entitled, um, When Fathers Lose Their Voice. When Fathers Lose Their Voice. And this message came out of the fact that and kind of what the song said, it could have been me, could have been me. And I always think about the fact that when, when people are like in an accident and one person lives and another person dies and one person say, man, God bless me, God bless me. And, I, and I, I often say to myself, so you're saying that the one that died was not blessed? I, I mean, those things that kind of run through my mind, you know, uh, you know, was he not blessed? You know, and so I think in the terms of fathers, you know, uh, and my whole... I guess the, the whole thrust of my message today is, listen, we got to begin to forgive those fathers. Forgive those fathers who, yeah, left you fatherless. Forgive those fathers, yes, yes, who were not there when you really needed them. Forgive those fathers. Because Christ, I mean, Christ has, he's filled the deficiency. When your father forsake you, I shall pick you up. And I can really say in my lifetime, I love my father to the end. My, my, my father had, had the open heart surgery at 83. He never got through. I mean, he never recovered from the surgery. Six months later, he passed. And I can think of one thing that always stays in my, in my mind. My dad called Cold Blue on my father one time, and he brought him back to life. And at, the, and at that same time that it happened in the hospital, I was having an episode. And so the nurses were rushing me out putting me in the bed where my father was having an episode and I recall that and I was trying to get back up and when I got back up man that 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 episode BAM slapped me right back down I couldn't hardly breathe couldn't move but my point is my dad never recovered and from that being brought back, they stuck a thing in his neck, a trick in his neck, and, and the things. You know, it's it a few times when my dad was, uh, where, where he actually, uh, they called us because, hey, man, uh, he's, he's pulled all the things out. My, my, my daddy got tired of living. The one that he was afraid of dying, he was just tired of being, here it is, and it's just true, speechless. He felt hopeless. He felt as if he was void. And I believe this. I believe that one of the things that really hurts a man more than anything is when a father, when a man loses his voice. Now, when I say losing his voice, now I'm speaking in reference to your children. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe your dad has lost his voice. Or when I say voice, let me say his power. Uh, his, uh, his power to be heard. His authority as a man. You know, uh, uh, hey, Dad, how many times, Dad, I thought you were coming to pick me up. He never showed up. Now I don't believe him anymore. Or, you know, or, or, or the wife says, well, you know what, you, you've been in, you've been out, you've been in, you don't come back no more. He's, he's lost his power. Nobody believes him. He's lost his respect, his integrity. He lost his voice. Uh, he lost his power. I think that's one of the worst things that a man and a father can experience when you speak to your kids and they don't believe you when you speak to your wife they don't believe you you know be known to some of us people do change and be known to some of us sometimes it's not them it's us 
I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, even with fathers, you know, sometimes they were just doing the best that they could, could do. And the best that they could be, you know. But when a father loses his voice, went back to my dad. I saw one time we, we came in, my brother and myself, and I'll tell you this right here. It took six months. He had the heart surgery. He was there for six months in the hospital from place to place. We moved him from place to place. And it had gotten to a point where, you know, it was close to the end and, and things were going on. But, uh, you know, my brother and myself, we, we stayed with him. But we, we came in one, one, one evening and they had him on dialysis. He was, he was up against the wall with about six other people. My dad was slumped all down in the chair and he was all, and my brother just went berserk. My younger brother, he, I mean, he went berserk. I mean, he just, every word you can think, he, he brought it out there. And I can see in my dad's face, he, I can see it right now. He couldn't, my dad couldn't talk. They had this trach, he couldn't talk anymore. He couldn't say anything. And this thought came to my mind. I said, you know, my dad is like a fish in a fish tank. And somebody has turned this bubbling water on. This is, this is what I'm just sharing. And he's in that fish tank and can't even cry out. That, that thought hit me about my father. Listen, I've seen my dad walk, walk miles rather than take a ride from somebody. Listen, I've, I've experienced my dad with me. My dad had a little garage where he fixed little cars. I've seen my dad take two cars, drive two cars. He got into one car, drove some blocks down, and we walked back to the other car. Got in that car, well, my dad was phenomenal. He had some faults. He fell short. You know, I don't have to forgive my dad because I, I mean, you know what I mean? I never held nothing against him. But my point is, my dad was the kind of man who, who I mean, you know, I mean, um, he would, and, and this is where I got this from, he would pawn everything he got before he asked anybody for a dime. He would exhaust everything he got before he would ask you for anything. I got that, I got that nature from him. But, but, but all I'm saying is that, you know, it's, it's time that, yeah, I mean, most of us had good fathers. Most of us had good fathers. I, I think of a time... Um, and I hope I don't want to be too long. Yeah, and I think of a time when, when um, you know, and my dad didn't show up, and so my uncle Ike came by there. You know, Uncle Ike. You know, you know, I'm black as tar, skinny. Uncle Ike, I don't know, six feet something, all the way out here, high yellow, and me and him walking up in there, and he holding my hand, and everybody's saying, "Is that your daddy?" But I'm, but but. I guess my point, as I leave this point, is, listen, when your mother and your father forsake you, God will always lift you up. He'll take you up. He'll put somebody, he'll put some things, or he'll give you a heart to understand that you're not by yourself. And that's all I'm saying. But the worst thing that a father could do is to lose his voice. I'm going to go to the book, book, book of Matthew. Matthew chapter uh, 16. Can we please? Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 14 through 15. On behalf of all the fathers who fell short, please forgive us. Forgive me. I want to be. I'm speaking to have the fathers. I need to be forgiven. You know, sometimes fathers came out of a very dysfunctional place. Sometimes fathers have, 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 have lost their voice. When I say voice, I mean power. They lost their power because it's like they've made some irreversible mistakes. Said some things that you know you should not have said, but you can't take them back. Sometimes, you know, fathers have it hard. We'll, we'll go there, but sometimes when a man stays in a, a relationship and he's dysfunctional, and he's got problems, gambling problems, all kind of problems going on, you know. Uh, and then they, they call him a no good, a, a no good, a deadbeat dad. But when he walks away, they call him a coward. Men have, see, you don't, you don't understand what men go through. And I, I, all I'm trying to say is, on the flip side of things, 
Man, we got to forgive those fathers. They were just like us. They were making mistakes. Said some things. Did some things that, that maybe cut somebody beyond measure. Cut them in the heart beyond measure. Said some words that, you know. So my point is forgiveness. Matthews. Chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Very a very important verse. For if you forgive others their trespasses, and the Amplified Version says this in, in parenthesis, that their reckless and willful, willful sins, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger, with the result that interferes with your relationship with God, then your, then your father will not forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness is not just an act. It's a, it is. It's, it's not just an action. It's actually a, a sinful nature, a sinful disease that will eat you alive. Unforgiveness will eat you alive and, until you're spiritually dead. That's let me say it again. That's good. It will, it will eat you alive. Unforgiveness will eat you alive until you are spiritually dead. We got to forgive the fathers. Forgive the fathers. Man, again, there's times when I've seen the men at their unhappiest moment. That's because they've lost their voice. Nobody believes them. The power of what they say doesn't hold value. My wife can talk to my kids all day long, and, and she does, she does. But, but it's something about when I sit down and I say something, I never scream at my kids. I talk, and they get the message. It's something about when your voice has power, has authority, when your voice can be heard, and you know that you're being heard. It's very important to you. The last thing I saw looking in my dad's eyes was... Man, I can't talk. Can't talk. And I think it's why he gave up. Again, I, I, I don't want to say, but again, he was pulling, they call, hey, he's pulling this stuff back out again. He couldn't talk. My dad was always the life of the party. My dad was always talking. My dad would sit down and pour so much wisdom into me about, and this is what he would always say, don't be like me. Be better than me. I recall times when my dad would be gone. We didn't say, I mean, we in the cold. No, he, he would come in, come in and hug us all together. Pray with us. Talk to us. I love my father. But he had things going on. As many as, many of us do. Come on now. You know, we're, we're doing the best that we can do at, father, at, at fatherhood. And let me explain to you at the age of 68. It, the learning process never ends. It's, there's always the unthinkable that happens. There's, there's, there's always things that's kind of beyond just out of the reach of your, uh, of your fatherly wisdom that you learn. But one thing I've learned is that we got to forgive our fathers. That's the key thing. My, my last uh, scripture, let's go to the book of Malachi. Return the father's heart back to the children. That's why we're in such despair. That's why we, there's so much destruction. There's, there's so much going on because God... Through Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, Malachi, chapter 4, and this is also on the image, chapter 4, verse 6. He wants to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, and children's hearts back to the fathers. That's where it all begins. That's where it starts. That's why things are so ruthless. I told my sons in growing up, listen, you were the man in the house. The man in the house. And I'll give you some examples. You're the man. Listen. You don't send your wife to buy a car. You go with your wife. Because beknownst to many people, I, I'm just being straight up, a man that sells or works on cars will see a woman coming. Oh, he have a whole different conversation. I mean, he'll tell you you need this, you need that. I've had sisters call me and say, Brother Roger, can you go with me to buy? Yeah, ain't no problem. Oh, he told me a whole different price. There's power and authority in the Father. Here we go. Malachi, uh, if we can, chapter 4, verse 6, only verse 6. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. 
in the hearts of the children to their fathers. And the Amplified says again in parenthesis, a reconciliation produced by repentance so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse or with complete destruction. That's why the world is in such a bad state. Things are out of place. And I'll end with what I begin with. Not to be controversy, but I put it this way. Man, it's a big job if you think that a man can blossom a little baby girl to the fullness I see my girls as flowers to the fullness of being blossomed to a virtual woman. I'm going to say it can't be done. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I would say it's highly improbable. Even with that, it's hard. I put it this way then. It's a great task for a man, for a woman to think that she can raise a baby boy into being a full-grown man and father. I said it without controversy. Not trying to challenge you, but let me get something to think about. I'll end with this. Listen, God said this. When your father and your mother and everybody forsake you, I'll be there. I'll be there for you. And I thank God for the father of all fathers. And I pray that even as we end with this message, that we all can cry out, Abba Father, my father. Because it's something about saying, my daddy, that's my daddy. I, I, I remember that. Man, that's my daddy. That's my father. It makes you feel good. It made my daughters, hey, that, that my daddy. Hey, my daddy's running. It makes my son, hey, daddy. Amen, amen. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Elder, all yours. Thank you, sir.